Hi guys, this is Debbie with Debbie J's Crafting Corner. Welcome to the next video in my Christmas crafting series for 2020. So I've been working on some last minute cards and decided to share this adorable rooftop reindeer slimline card that I made using stamps from Hello Bluebird. This is an adorable stamp set. I've had it a while and just never did have enough time to finish. I've got so many Christmas stamps uh, because I just fell in love with them and then have not had time to use them because we just run out of time at Christmas. But I did manage to get this one in. It's got four really cute reindeer, a uh, chimney uh, and rooftop and this is just darling. And there, since there are four deer, I decided to use all four of them on this card and make it into a slim line card. Now the rooftop doesn't really have that long of a line so I just drew a line out and um, with a pencil and then with a black marker I'm sorry a black um, gel pen so that I would have the continued roof line and then I just used some of my Spectrum Noir markers to color everything in for the roof I'm using the DR family those are my dark reds um, I'm using DR5 DR6 DR4 and then for the inside of the chimney, I'm going to be using some BGRs. That's going to be a BGR um, 5 and a BGR 3. So with all of this coloring, I'm trying to do a little bit more contrast with my coloring. And hopefully it will be getting better. And you guys are going to be able to see the progression <laughs> as I do more coloring this year. So I'm trying to make sure that the darks are really dark and that the lights are pretty light as well. I probably could have gone lighter than the DR3 with this, but I still think that it turned out really well for a rooftop chimney. I'm also trying something different on this one too. I went ahead and did a little swatch card including a picture of that chimney colored in separate with all the colors that I used and hopefully this will help me remember which combinations worked well for me. I have, you guys know, I am more of a seat of my pants kind of crafter. I just pick up my markers and go and usually I do swatch them off on a piece of cardstock right then but that means I am rediscovering the same combinations over and over and over again. And I'm also forgetting the ones that I actually really liked that I may want to try using again. So I've moved on to one of the little deer. I'm using the RBs for this. So RB4 is the darkest and that's going to be in for the really dark shadows. And then I'm going in with RB3 for a mid-tone color. And then I'll do all of my highlights and lighter shading in with RB1. I also decided to just color in the one deer on camera because I don't want this video to be too terribly long. One thing to note though when you are coloring in some images you probably notice that the deer is pretty light so I'm going to go back in with some of the darker shades to bring out some of that color. You can definitely continue layering up until you get exactly what you want and it turns out really really cute. Now I'm going on to the deer's head and I'm using again that RB4 for all of the places that I think that they should be the darkest in shadow and show a little bit of more shape for the face and then I'm going to go in with RB3 and kind of blend that out just a touch and then go in with RB1 for my lightest shade. Now for the, the line between the RB3 and the RB1 I do do quite a bit of blending between those because I don't want the lines to be quite as harsh as they started off. So here's that second swatch card. I will be including a picture of each of those over on my blog so that if you want to know what kind of color combinations I'm using, you can take a look over there. For inside of the ears and for a little color in the cheeks, I went with the CR1. And now I'm going back because I forgot and coloring in all the hooves on all those cute little deer. And then I'll go ahead and do the same with the antlers using that darkest shade from before, the RB4. Thank you. 
Now there is a lot of white space on here and I decided I'm not going to go and color that. I'm actually going to layer it up with some patterned paper. But before I do that I go ahead and color in all of those little collars on the deer using AG1 for the green and then using um, GY Yes, GY1 for the little bells. Then I'm adding in some um, some grays for the snow to give it a little bit more texture. And I'm using BGR1 for that. And I did go in with my colorless blender on a couple of spots. Now I'm going to cut this guy out. Now I do not have a die for this, so I'm using my scan and cut. Um, the brown mat that you're seeing is actually a piece of contact paper that I'm using as the material to restick and this machine is super super simple the screens tell you exactly what you need to do so I go ahead and I scan in that image and this is real time I did not speed this up so you can see it is pretty quick but it does take a set to get that scanned in Now I'm going over to the machine and it says for me to frame the image. So that just means bringing up those little arrows to right around where that image is. Now I'm wanting it to cut all the way off the paper. So I didn't tell it, I didn't frame in onto the cardstock. It's still kind of wrapped around. And you can see that it did notice everything. So that was perfect. I hit this little button there and that helps me give it an offset because I wanted a slight offset on this. Now the downside for doing the offset on this one is that because it's cutting to the edge of the paper, it's actually going to cut slightly over onto my mat. And that is perfectly fine. Like I said, this is some contact paper I'm using for that stick. Um, I will show in a future video once I get a good setup for my scan and cut stuff. I will show how I did a resticking probably next time I restick this one. It is working out really, really, really well. I love the way that I don't have to worry about whether or not my cardstock is going to stay down. So it has been perfect. And this is cutting out all of those little deer, even though I didn't have any dies for this. And again, this is real time. So this is how quick this cuts everything out. Imagine having to sit there and fussy cut all of these guys out. So now I'm gonna check and see how it does. And it is kind of stuck on there and it didn't cut all the way through this I believe is because of the way I've got everything set up because I'm using that um, contact paper I have this set up on half cut which you would usually do for um, cutting stickers because you don't want it to go through the um, the protective layer on the back I'm doing it this way though so I can get that cut without it going through my <laughs> or without it going through my sticky mat uh, and this time it cut through fine without a problem and it didn't go through the contact paper. So this, I, this is going to turn out so awesome. Um, I love the way that it just peels right off and instant weeding. So I'll go ahead and take this over to my desk and now I'm going to trim it down a little bit. Now I had drew, drawn some lines on here about where I wanted the edges to be because this is card number two. I had made one earlier. Decided I wanted a one inch from the top of the snow to the bottom of this snow area and I needed to trim it down just a touch because I am going to be putting some pattern pa paper that'll work kind of as a mat on part of this as well. So I am lining this this image up with that pattern paper I'm going to be using because I want them to line up right on the edge and I'm just trimming off that second side and now I get to put everything together um, before doing that I go ahead and erase some of those pencil lines so they're not going to be visible on the finished card Before putting it all together, I decided I wanted to go ahead and put on my sentiment. Now, like I said, I have done the same exact card before, um, so I kind of know where I want everything to go, and I already had the stamp in. Um, last time, I stamped everything after assembling it, but I'm going ahead and doing it on this strip first. That's where I want it to go after fussing around a little bit, so I'm just going to take my Memento Tuxedo Black ink again and go ahead and add that sentiment right there. Thank you. 
and that looks great. Now I'm going to go ahead and make my card base. Now since this is a slim line, the typical size that I do for that is using a piece of 8.5 by 7 cardstock. So I just score that at 3.5, which is right in the middle on the 7 inch side, and it's a perfect slim line card. Now this will fit in any kind, any ten, size 10 envelope, but I like making my own, so I've added that to the end to show you a couple of options if you want to try making your own um, envelopes without using any kind of dies. So first I'm going to go ahead and add that pattern paper. It was from a Recollections pattern paper pack that just, it's a soft bluish, greenish blue with little snowflakes in there. I thought that was so pretty. And I'm lining it up on my card to give just a slight gap on the top and the sides. Then I'm going to go ahead and add adhesive completely to the back of this little panel with all the deer on there and then I'm going to line it up at the bottom leaving a slight gap on there and lining it up with the sides. And that means that although this piece of pattern paper wasn't exactly the right size it still worked out perfect. And there we go. I just think this is so darling. Next I'm going to take some tonic Nouveau drops. Um, actually this is glitter accents and it is in fresh snowfall so i'm going to take that and add some snow to the card um, you could use stickles or something like that or even add glue plus glitter and it would look awesome i just wanted something more than just the gray to show that this is snow and i think that they turned out absolutely gorgeous once this was done Next, we're going to make a couple of envelopes. And what I'm using for this isn't cardstock. This is actually some old stationary paper that I've had in my stash, I think probably close to 20 years. You can use any kind of paper to do um, an envelope. And I'm going ahead and I'm first I'm scoring it on the long end at two inches. And you see, I keep on putting a card back just to make sure that I get all of my measurements good. So on the other side, I'm going to measure, I'm going to score it at two and a half. So on the long ends, you've got it scored at two inches and at two and a half inches. Like I said, we're gonna be doing two different versions, but both versions are going to use that same scoring. It's the other ends that are gonna be a little bit different. So I'm going ahead and I'm folding everything up so I know that my card is gonna fit perfectly inside of that. Next, we have to score the other end. So I open it back up and whenever you do your scores, do it pretty side up and do the scoring that way. For this first card, we're gonna score at one and a half inches on one end. I went ahead and folded at the score and put the card in to check the measurements on that. Now I'm going to flip it over again and check the measurements on the other end. So on this end, I'm going to be scoring at one half inch. So I have folded on all of those score lines and now I'm starting to cut a few little notches out at those, um, basically where the folds intersect. So you basically just cut straight up and then you can cut a little triangle and that gives you a little bit of extra room. Now I also want to do some um, rounding of my of the corners just because I feel it gives it a smoother, uh, more professional look. And I, what I've discovered is I can use my corner rounder and if I fold the paper, it will go ahead and basically round on both sides of that paper. Now I'm cutting out the extra notches. Um, once we're done with this, you'll be able to see the full flat surface of what this card, um, what this envelope is supposed to look like. So now I'm going ahead and I'm putting some, um, some double-sided adhesive down on one of the inside flaps. So I folded the two um, long ends in, and then I'm going to fold the other one down to attach it. Now you may recognize that this looks kind of like a coin envelope. So this one, now that I'm sealing up the short end, it's going to have an opening at the other end. And again, it does look a lot like a, just a little coin envelope and it's perfect. So I'm going ahead and adding a little more of that double-sided adhesive on the end 
so once I have the card in and have it addressed, I can go ahead and seal that up and it is ready to go. For the second one, we're gonna do the same kind of scoring to start off with. We're gonna score at two inches and at two and a half inches. And then now that we're done, we're gonna be scoring on the other end. So I'm doing one inch on each end. We'll do like we did on the last um, envelope. We go ahead and fold on all of those score lines, and then we're gonna do some cutting and some corner rounding. Okay, so I'm gonna start off by doing that, um, cor the corner rounding on all of the corners that I think are gonna still be showing. And then I'm just trimming off that corner there as it's not needed. And then I'm folding it over so I can actually round a couple of other corners. This corner rounder is awesome. And sometimes you just need, all you need to do is fold the paper to get it rounded exactly where you need it. Now I know this is going pretty quick, but I will have instructions over on my blog. And if this is something that you're interested in, if you like this type of instruction, let me know down in the comments and I'll start doing some more in-depth step-by-step um, instructions over on my blog and some videos specifically for that. So this is the shape that you should wind up with in the end. And now we're just gonna fold the flaps in. So fold in the sides and then fold up the bottom. And I'm going to just put a little bit of double-sided adhesive tape on the two ends of the bottom of that bottom flap. And burnish those down and then take off the release paper. Then I can fold it up and that will be the two, that will basically create the flaps of the, that will create the envelope. <laughs> now I'm putting another piece of double-sided adhesive across the top there, and that's gonna be so we can seal it in the envelope. And look how nice that just goes right in. This, I have to say, is my favorite way of making a slimline card envelope. So that finishes up these cards for today. Thank you so much for dropping by. I hope that you've been inspired to get those last minute cards done and I would love to see what you create. So come join my Facebook group, Crafting with Debbie, and show us your creations. I've left a link down in the description box below. If you create anything using one of my Christmas crafting videos though, please be sure to post a picture on social media and tag me at hashtag Debbie J's Crafting Corner and at hashtag DJCC Christmas 2020. You can also see all of my Christmas crafting videos for 2020 by clicking on hashtag DJCC Christmas 2020 down in the video title. Here are some other videos that you may be interested in. Thank you so much for dropping by. And remember, if I can make it, you can too.